Hi all, welcome to Knife Edge UK, uh, doing another video here for you. Um, I'm on a bit of a run, so I'm gonna get quite a few pieces from the collection and stuff that's passing through uh, filmed. And I'm gonna uh, do another Hinderer today. There's quite a few Hinderer videos on my channel. I am a fan, um, particularly over the last few years, but I, I am a fan of when they're good from before that as well. But this is a relatively recent one. This is a full track. Uh, these were released in 2018, if I remember correctly. And they are, at this point, no longer available. But you can find them on the secondary market here and there. And there has been some talk of future ones, maybe. But we'll, we'll talk about that shortly. Before we go any further, let's just do some size comparisons against this, to be frank, absolutely massive knife. There it is against a... I say massive. It's not massive. It depends what you're used to, but it is a big knife. No question at all. Th that's um, an X... Sorry, no, it's not. That is a Sabenza 21. This is an XM18 3.5. I do have a 24, but it's not terribly accessible to me. I bet people will want to see it against the 24, though. So bear with me. This is quite a rare... Um, non-flipper 24. The angle of the camera is making this look sizable next to it, but it's it, the it's interesting. The 24 is actually slightly bigger. It's not quite as tall in the handle, but the whole knife is thicker on the 24. Uh, this is actually the same thickness as the as the 3.5 XM18, and so though there isn't an awful lot of difference, and the 24 actually carries a little bit more easily than the half track or a little more comfortably in pocket this actually feels somehow because of its um dimensional thin uh, you know dimensionally it's thinner it feels a little bit more comfortable to carry that said if you're carrying something like this you probably aren't overly worried about carry comfort in all honesty it's a it's a big heavy bruiser of a knife so there's a few size comparisons anyway. So what to say about the half track? Well, it was, um, I believe I'm right in saying, the first knife to implement the triway pivot system. So what you see on um, on all current hinderers being released is this option to you know switch between bearings, phosphor bronze or Teflon washers. And it also had another party piece, um, which we've just come, seen come back on the latest hinderer model, which is the inclusion of a tool actually on the back of the knife to disassemble the whole knife the only thing this won't do is take your lock bar um insert out but you don't need to do that and um, this works for everything else on the knife it's very clever it's got a little spring here that sits on that standoff and then it hooks in there it's not coming out with any great ease it's not going to be knocked it's fantastic there's also a little pocket underneath here where you can store the other parts I have never done that, um, and I, I don't think I would do, because I think they would probably rattle around and annoy me. Um, so what else can we say? Well, this one is a DLT exclusive um, M390 version. This is the spear point blade. You'll also see them in Spanto. I don't think there's been any other blade shapes of these, and they are not really around anymore. So we'll, before we talk any, any more about the knife, let's just cover that. These... As far as I'm aware, Rick has said that these won't be done, or they're kind of not going to be done again in this form. Uh, the general gist of things amongst the Hindra people and everything else, everyone that's into these knives, is that this was considered just too expensive to make in this version. Um, and it was already an expensive knife at retail, so if they decided that, it must have been uh, considerably costly to produce. And I can understand that because there's a lot of milling going on here. There's a lot of detail. You have the triway pivot system to consider. You have the extra complexity of the backspacer. You have this custom hardware that isn't on any other hinderer knife, um, or at least wasn't at the time that this was produced. So I can understand why this must have been a very, very costly knife to produce, particularly when the market thought that it was a bit expensive anyway. So I can understand that. There was talk for a little while of it maybe being produced in aluminium. I can't imagine... I have nothing against a really good aluminium handle, but I can't really imagine Hinderer going down that road. I could be wrong. Maybe one day we'll see that, but I would doubt it just on a personal level. It just doesn't feel likely to me. So maybe we'll see these back here and there as like, you know, short runs or something. I don't think there's, you know, been any it'll never happen again comments from the Hinderer folks. But um, it, as it stands right now, these are quite hard to come by. And it seems that the, the prices and desirability of these is kind of going up and up in line with that. So let's talk about the actual knife itself. So you've got the spear point profile on this one. 
no spanto grind. This is a stone wash. Um, the, you obviously you get a working finish. I think I've only ever seen these in, in working um, and stone wash. Sometimes you get them with anodization on the handles. You obviously get different um, inlay pieces. But this one's a, a straight stone wash. Um, Hindra stone wash is really lovely. Hopefully um, you can see that clearly enough in the video. It's, it's a great stone wash. Um, excellent work all round. The, the handle is this, what appears to be quite an angular shape, uh, but it, it's actually in classic Rick Hinderer fashion, it actually is pretty comfortable. I can't call this an ergonomic masterwork in the same way that you maybe could do, you know, something like if I grab an MP1, um, incidentally, sorry about all the smuts on the blade, this one gets used a lot. Um, the MP1 for me is an absolutely perfect knife in hand. I certainly couldn't say that about the half track, the, sorry, the full track, but it's um, it's still uh, way more comfortable in hand than you would imagine. You, If you hold back slightly, sorry, get my whole hand in, it, it's really nice. Your finger can fall into this divot or you can reach forward onto the jimping, which isn't overly aggressive. It's this sort of almost crown chamfering on the jimping. It's actually really nicely done and it feels relatively comfortable. Handles are milled only in the sense that they are milled underneath these pockets. So there is actually some internal milling in this, but it's kind of the opposite way round to what you would expect. As such, this is a pretty chunky knife. It's nowhere near as heavy in hand as a um, 24. Uh, certainly you can go and find the specs for those um, online. But yeah, this is running, um, this is running on... Should we move on to the action? No, we'll quickly talk about the pocket clip. It's got a standard pocket clip. Um, unlike almost all other hinderers, which you'll see have the little filler tab at the top and you can switch them around for either side and obviously put other things in the, in the little filler tab. This one is just right-handed tip up carry. There's no other movement, which is unusual for hinderer, but fine. It's also not got the round lock bar stabilizer that you're used to seeing, but it does have um, lock bar uh, over travel stop on the back of the insert. And you've also got the actual scale itself stopping the um, stopping any inward pressure happening on the lock bar. So it's not really an issue. Action. This one's on bearings at the moment, and it has a deeply addictive and excellent action. Obviously, this is a big, heavy um, blade, so you expect it to drop, but this is a luxurious, very high-end action out of what is a, you know, a really full-bore beatery knife. It's fantastic. The deployment... This is a huge flipper tab, but it's not actually as big as it looks. Part of the reason it, it looks so large is because you have this dip. So if you imagine that carrying on all the way through there, it would then look like kind of a normal flipper tab. So it's not as massive as it appears. But if you put your finger on the jimping at the top of it, it's not got the pointiness that some of Hindra's tabs do. It launches fantastically well with a push button. You can get in front of it if you want to and light switch it. That works absolutely fine as well. You've only got one form of deployment really on this knife. You can open it via this fuller, but I think it's more decorative than anything else, the fuller. Unlike most other hinderers that have, you know, either thumb studs or blade stops, this one doesn't have them. Uh, it's it's one downside. In some ways, I kind of wish it did have thumb studs because I kind of like being able to use them as well. I also like the opportunity for a non-flipper version of a Hindra. This doesn't have them. Honestly, with a flipping action this addictive, I really don't mind. This has got beautiful lockup. It's fantastically stable and solid. That's not going anywhere. And then we get to a couple of little nitpicks. So the the knife, as I say, you know, you've got all the normal, it's a massive beater of a knife things to consider. You know that going in, it's not pretending to be anything else. So they're not really nitpicks from my point of view. The the only nitpick that I really have, I mean, everything is really well machined. This is a largely, to be honest, a largely perfect production knife. Uh, what you do have is this really nice kind of convex uh, kind of ball end mill chamfer in here, which is lovely. It's then been mirrored on the opposite side where the lock bar relief is. And that means that because this isn't flat, it's a concave inwards. This edge is kind of sharp. It, it's not something which would be that bothersome, I don't think. I am nitpicking here. But yeah, I could see some people maybe wishing either A, this was... Um, less deep and so there was a bit more relief so you could get a bit more meat of your thumb in there or this was just a flat chamfer just so that it wasn't quite so pokey but we are talking about tiny nitpicks here so that basically is a little overview of the full track um as a hinderer fan i really like this to be honest i think it's kicking the um the xm24 as cool as that one is in that very rare sterile non-flipper form 
uh, I think it might be kicking that out of the collection. I don't need two knives as huge and beatery as this. Um, and so I think uh, I think that one will go and this one will stay. And um, which is saying quite a lot really because I, I love that one as well. But there's something about the full track, so I think we we'll go scale hunting. Thanks very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one.